Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you everybody for joining my channel. I'm going to be talking about Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Voyager might be a crowning achievement for Star Trek. It might not have the presence Do Space Nine had in the sense of a living space, of a character in the space station itself. Voyager took the five-year mission of the original Star Trek, the mythos of lore, and turned it on its head by sending it, or an accident which sends it so far away from Earth that it'll take 70 years to get back at maximum speed. So they start heading back to Earth, and it is just a refreshing take on Star Trek, and in my opinion, not only the first female captain, but maybe the best captain. She took uh, William Shatner's Kirk, blended it with everything, and is just, she is a presence to behold. What is it, Kate Mulgrew? Man, she's just amazing. I've seen her recently on some shows. I think it's like Orange is the New Black, and she's got some uh, good critics, crit critics are like her on the show. There are some maybe behind the scenes stuff that say she was a real uh, workaholic and strict and took it too seriously. But I, in a way, don't care unless they're doing criminal stuff. She is the heart and soul of the show. She's an amazing actress on so many levels when this show deals with so many of the crazy stuff it does. Then you got a really great cast, a unique situation where they're hunting or they're, they're looking for a, I guess a uh, rogue, I think they eventually start calling them like terrorists or something. But there's a group, um, the Maquis, that are defying Starfleet because of the agreement with the Cardassian neutral zone. And this does what the next generation did for D Space Nine. It passes the torch. It was passed the torch by D Space Nine. So just like next generation, Star Trek, uh, the Enterprise was docked at D Space Nine. They end Star Trek The Next Generation, and to have a companion to Deep Space Nine, they start Star Trek Voyager, and they start it on Deep Space Nine. They're going to go into the Badlands, search for the Maquis, they get sent to another quadrant in space that'll take them 70 years or so to get back to Earth. You've got two crews who are taken captive by an entity who's in desperation, you find out, to save a certain people that it wronged my alien being so they have to sacrifice the Maquis ship and all coexist on Voyager so it's a really unique situation Captain Janeway from Starfleet she had a informant with the Maquis and that becomes her well he was her first in command I guess for in a sense the Vulcan Tuvok, and he's a spy for the Federation, and one of the Maquis was a former uh, Starfleet commander, I think, and he was given the first in command, and then they had to blend the crews and get through the, um, you know, all the troubles of a, a ragtag group who had been fed up with the Federation, and that you know, shows through throughout the whole show almost, well, for a good portion of it. And you have Starfleet, you know, buy the book, and they've got to blend and merge, take all their talents to survive this. They took the threat of the bulk to a new level, which Next Generation 
really hit it out of the park introducing the Borg. Uh, Voyager just it makes it intimate and makes it a looming presence that's felt and it's weighty and has a real menace to it. I think Janeway's talent overshadows the show in a way. She's just so good in everything and everything she does, just is that caliber of an actor. But the cast is no, no slouches either. You got some great casting and you got introduced to Seven of Nine, which blew everybody away. Jerry Ryan eventually, the Borg who was saved and um, disconnected from the hive mind of the Borg. Just so much to like about this show and its journey. So you've got this two groups that are somewhat enemies on different sides of this conflict that gets sent to a totally new place, uncharted. They got to use their resources wisely, meet friends, uh, you know, make enemies along the way. There's betrayal and just a whole slew of things that really make this show stand out. I get a kick out of watching it. It was one of those shows we watched week after week, me and my friends. There's a um, air of power around Janeway. And when she brings people into her fold, there's an electricity. She has a way of engaging with a crew member if they're coming up with a good idea and it becomes so engrossing. I think it had to do with the fact that she was a science officer, I believe, who became captain. So she's got all these quirks of a science officer underneath this, you know, I got to be the captain. But not only do I have to be a captain, I have to be, I have to hold the values of Starfleet where they don't make sense anymore. You're in a different quadrant. There's rules are different. There's no friends. There's little connection anymore to what's going on with Deep Space Nine, which another quadrant of space was using the wormhole to start a war. They are so far off the beaten path that everything is new. You got new aliens, new ways of treating societies and bringing fresh blood into the franchise. Gene Roddenberry's uh, vision is uh, turned up a notch again. It's just in a different direction where I feel so at home watching Deep Space Nine. There's so much um, variance and emotion and threat level where there's good feeling, fun shows and there are pulse pounding wartime moments. And Voyager, it has a focus that's unique. And it wasn't like the original series, which might have been on a five-year mission. They have no easy way home. They plan on it being a generational ship. And only through happenstance and uh, brilliant thinking and, you know, adaption to their situation that they're able to, in the last episodes, figure out they can get home. Using the Borg technology and the Borg access to special warp tunnels. I can't say enough good things about Star Trek. I am a big time Trekkie. was captured when I was younger. I've talked about that in the original series. Where I'm watching it all night. There's a charm to it. A silliness looking back. And when I talk about the next generation, I can see the shakiness at the beginning. But Deep Space Nine Voyager are part of that rock-solid foundation for all Star Trek to come for me. I love these shows in a way that give you hope and that there is wonder and um, acceptance in the future. There's a need to overcome what we are now in this day and age to grow, to explore space and take new challenges and um, excel at them. 
and they have a good way of showing us that there are always issues and problems. And then you take all that and you go, okay, you're in another part of the galaxy you know nothing of, you have no maps of, and that all becomes part of the struggle. Okay, can we trade this technology for that? Oh, okay, you know, oh, we need this technology, but we won't do this, that type of thing. And you've got this um, new characters that come in that are helpful, and some leave early. There's a, a really deep through line stories of betrayal that are really cool and believable. And to me, nothing was sort of really so believable until Deep Space Nine. It just felt so comfortable in its setting. Voyager, I think, does the same. Next Generation just didn't start feeling comfortable to me until a certain... Or they didn't seem to feel comfortable in their own skin until a certain time, but I don't blame it. These shows are great television. The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager... The epitome of Star Trek, um, talent, passion coming together with a vision done excellent, excellently. And we could nitpick things. you got, you know, series that do 172 episodes, 176. They all add uh, seven seasons. A uh, staple in Star Trek lore until the next one, which would be a Star Trek Enterprise. Which goes back in time. Uh, but when the movies went to the next generation movies. So it is that bridge between the original cast and the, the movie called Star Trek Generations. Which puts Kirk and Picard on the same screen. In that transition, Voyager is there in a way. There's a... Uh, Star Trek Next Generation movie where he contacts an admiral and it's Janeway. So she had come back from the last season informed the Starfleet about the Borg and had done such an amazing job they made her an admiral. It just gave legitimacy to the whole connected universe that these shows were part of a process that were paying off the next generation movies, I might get to all the movies in, in a sense. I think their heart, though, is in the TV shows and what you can do on television in telling these long stories. I think Voyager just has a unique perspective like Deep Space Nine, whereas the next generation kind of continued the original. I think you got to give a show like this a shot. Kate Mulgrew is just fucking amazing. I don't think there's a better captain yet in Star Trek, as much as that might be blasphemy. I think there's a good there's a good argument for it. <laughs> I think she's got what it takes. I think people would like the show. You might feel a little um, lost coming into the show, but okay. A little bit different than the next generation or even to space nine because it is thrust from the situation it is normal stuff and then put into a totally new um setting that creates its own struggles where the other ones don't no except for d space nine and the fact that they're in a former occupied space station star trek voyager has it all does it all amazingly well I'll give the overshadowing of Janeway a, a, a plus for the show because the, sh the crew is great. The actors are good. The chemistry is on point, although maybe behind the scenes stuff wasn't so, you know, uh, rosy, cheeky, fun stuff. Uh, sometimes it's good to be professional because you can make a show like this. Check out Star Trek Voyager. I'll talk to everybody next time. Stay safe. My best to you and yours.